for hours at a time. I was kind of a lonely kid. <laughs> Welcome to Skywatch TV. I'm Derek Gilbert. But there's a point to this, and that is that the very layout of our nation's capital may have more to do with the efficient movement of people and goods from place to place and more to do with the power, the supernatural power that it gives those who actually occupy the buildings of government. Joining me on the panel as we continue our discussion about the release of the new book, Saboteurs and the Supernatural Power Behind Them. The new book by Tom Horn is, of course, the author of the book, Tom Horn. Hey, Tom, be with him. The uh, host of Into the Multiverse on Skywatch TV, Josh Peck. Thanks for having me back. And the co-host of my life and author <laughs> of the new novels, The Red Wing Saga, Blood, Lies, and Blood Rights, Sharon K. Gilbert. Hi, sweetie. Uh, we're talking about the spiritual war behind the geopolitical fight uh, that has been ongoing, not just here in Washington, D.C., but all around the world. We've seen the, the rise of various political movements in Spain. The Catalonia region on the border with France is trying to secede and become its own country. Um, the, the, the rise of nationalist movements in reaction to globalist movements in, in Europe and here mm -hmm. in the United States. Um, but th this sort of fighting has been, has been going on since the beginning of time. Um, we even saw it in, um, well, uh, here's an example. Back when there were only like three ways the world could be divided, you know, mm -hmm. Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Mm -hmm. And Ham, who was the youngest, decided he was going to take his own share from his other two brothers by, um, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> exposing his father's nakedness, which is a euphemism for incest with his mother. Mm -hmm. uh, but by becoming the, the top dog, and that, that's... You know, there are other examples in the Bible where that happens, by the way. David's son, Absalom, did mm -hmm. it. Uh, but it, it's, it's, it's like a dog marking his territory, not mm -hmm. to be yeah. too graphic about it. But uh, so th this sort of political fighting with, with the spiritual forces behind it has been uh, ongoing since the beginning of time. Um, the, the, we talked about the, the Freemasons, and, and mm -hmm. maybe you can summarize again, Tom, you know, how Washington, D.C., uh, under the influence of Freemasonry, was set up to bring forth some sort of spiritual entity, the return of Apollo. Right. So, you know, what's interesting is I'm listening to you uh, right now and you're talking about, you know, what um, Noah's uh, kid tried to do, mm -hmm. right, and, and uh, some of the other examples from the Bible. But how closely related to that is it to the sex magic that we talked about on some of the other programs? Well, the that's Babylon a good point. I never thought of it that way. And, yeah. and, mm -hmm. and the layout of Washington, D.C. The whole yeah. idea is to create a generator that, create, that, that brings about the incarnation or the resurrection. Huh. It draws mm -hmm. the yeah. seed, yeah. Mm -hmm. the yeah. seed of the underworld entity up through the base of the obelisk, right? It's all about sex magic. It's all about procreation. Well, that's what Og's Bed was all about. It's Og's Bed, right? Yes, you yes. Know, that makes sense, too, because Noah cursed uh, Canaan. Canaan. And yeah. not mm -hmm. Ham, you know, yes. he, he, cur he cursed the seed that came came from that unholy mm -hmm. union. You know, and interestingly, the Amorites were descendants, were one of the children of Canaan. Mm -hmm. and yeah, right, the, right. And the Amorites mm -hmm. that I've argued in a couple of presentations I've given, and I'm going to have to put this into a book, mm -hmm. uh, are the people that really manifested the opposition to God's chosen people in the Holy Land. Mm -hmm. They were the ones who uh, believed that they were descended from the Datanu who that Estonian scholar I mentioned earlier in that same article, which is just, it's, an, it's a mind-blowing article once you finally figure out what he's trying to say, uh, traced the etymology of that word and said, oh yeah, this, this ancient Amorite tribe from which the great Amorite kings of the ancient world, Hammurabi the Great, mm -hmm. who lived at the time of Jacob, uh, and, and the, the Ugaritic kings who were around during the time of the judges traced their ancestry back to this one tribe. The Datanu is the name of, from which the Greeks got the name of the, their old gods, the Titans. Yes. Mm -hmm. So they believed that they, and they were performing these rituals. In fact, I just found an article today on that, that necromancy ritual for the last king mm -hmm. of the city state of Ugara. To, we summon thee, O council of the... Right. Titans. That's right. Mm -hmm. Trying the to bring format, back the Rephaim. And we summon the El Rephaim of the earth to bless the king. But right. the format of that ritual is exactly the same as a genealogical list. And this is how scholars have interpreted it anyway. Oh, this is just the genealogy of Hammurabi and his ancestors. The format is the same, though. They were summoning these old dead kings, the Rephaim, mm -hmm. the Nephilim to bless the new king of Babylon, right. which is the Amorites. So again, the Amorites descended from Canaan, cursed mm -hmm. by Noah, yep. because Canaan was apparently the product of this unholy union between mm -hmm. Ham and his own mother. Yeah. 
So were they which, calling a meeting in the Infernal Council? I, d it makes you wonder, doesn't it? It makes you wonder. Yeah. And okay, in this ritual, the sun god, which in Canaanite was Sh Shapash, a female, and, mm -hmm. and in the older Babylonian religion, she was male. Shamash. Yes, yeah, Shamash, would go down to the underworld accompanied by the Rephaim. The Rephaim of Baal, in fact. This video belongs to lordsprophecy.com. Please visit our website for more update. Right, well, and, 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 and yeah. that's, that language is carried over into the Old Testament where it refers to the, the uh, Rapha, yes. mm -hmm. squirming beneath the surface mm -hmm. of the earth, right? right? And, and that's Amorite idea. So the, the, the interesting thing is uh, some might say, well, the Old Testament is borrowing from Amorite theology, mm -hmm. Where in this case, I'm saying, no, it's it, that what they were trying to do is real. Mm -hmm. yeah. that these entities are in the underworld. They form some kind of an acolyte assembly mm -hmm. of lower or lesser gods mm -hmm. or whatever under the bale, right? And there does seem to be some indication that there had some methodology, if not in physical form, at least spiritually, mm -hmm. they had some capacity for bringing them back up. And it, but it was always sex magic. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned uh, Og's bed, right? Mm -hmm. We know that a, a identical bed was found at, at uh, Edamanaki, right? Yes. At the yes. Tower of Babel. Um, and that it was used, uh, who was the god? That Marduk. Would, yeah. It was the temple of Marduk in Babylon. Mm -hmm. right. He would come there for the annual Akitu festival right. for the new year with right. his consort goddess to have right. ritual they would sex. Have, they would have ritual sex. But so think about... Wow. Um, all of Israel, though, are commanded to be circumcised. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the whole act of creation is the nearest thing man can be with God. But with the children of Israel, this had to be part of a covenant. Mm -hmm. It was a covenant relationship with God, right? Mm -hmm. So I think in, you know, in the modern times, we don't really comprehend or even you know, value or respect or whatever the word, term might be, this idea of the vows of marriage. Mm -hmm. And what that means to God is kind of lost in today's, mm -hmm. you know, hookup culture. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, and people just don't get it. But back to Washington, D.C. The <laughs> yeah. whole, it's, it's the world's largest sexual organs, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. On display exactly. for the very purpose of bringing about the uh, resurrection of Osiris or who the Greeks would call Apollo. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and that's not just my opinion. Anybody that wants to confirm this mm -hmm. can go to the Our U.S. Government Library of Congress website mm -hmm. and click on the article called The Most Approved Plan. And the whole article talks about how Washington and Jefferson and, and the rest of them advertised an engineering contest. And it was not just for people that were living here in early America, uh, but around the world, mm -hmm. French designers, whoever. Uh, whoever created the best um, layout of the U.S. capital city was going to win a bunch of engineering contracts and all that, and the city was going to be based on that, right? Uh, and, uh, but at the end of the day, if you read this article on the Library of Congress website, it says that uh, Washington and Jefferson, and it says Jefferson especially, rejected every idea that came out for one reason, and that is that Thomas Jefferson wanted the U.S. capital city laid out based on two things. One, the old Roman pantheon, mm -hmm. and secondly, to be dedicated to all pagan gods. Mm -hmm. It actually says that. So then when you see that, then everything else in Washington makes, makes sense. sense. Right. The layout, why the dome is there, and why it's even laid out in the Washington Mall. Right. If you look down even at the architecture of the, of the, of the Jefferson Memorial, mm -hmm. right, you can see that ancient pagan architecture, and then you see the giant obelisk, you know, Osiris's missing organ. Mm -hmm. And then you look mm -hmm. up here to the U.S. Capitol Dome, which has all the Roman kind mm -hmm. of feel to it, right? But the, the belly exactly. of Isis, right, mm -hmm. uh, that is there. And uh, then on the inside, you've got the painting of the apotheosis of well, and, Washington. Yeah, so again, mm -hmm. you, yeah, I, in fact, I would tell people, if you've never done this, go to uh, Washington, D.C. sometime. And you can take the free tour of the U.S. Capitol Dome. You can go inside and look up, and, and it is rich with Freemasonic 
and occultic mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. uh, symbolism. Yeah, there's even what seventy or seventy two mm-hmm. pentagrams. There's seventy two pentagrams, yeah. but but so up in the underbelly of Isis mm-hmm. is the apotheosis. That's what it's officially mm-hmm. called. Brumidi's famous painting, the apotheosis of George Washington. Uh, which means to become a god. Mm -hmm. Well, two things. One, look at the heaven that he's rising into because (laughs) these are all Greek and Roman pagan gods and demons, uh, uh, including um, uh, who's the god that... um, Vulcan. Vulcan, Mm -hmm. yeah, that Manly P. Hall says fills the Mm -hmm. Freemasons' Mm -hmm. hands with the seething energies of Lucifer. Um, And uh, But what god is he becoming? Well, you know, all of the writers... Uh, of the 18, 1900s, they said he's becoming Osiris. Mm-hmm. This is the mm-hmm. belief system in Freemasonry of which Washington was a, you know. Mm. Well, elsewhere in the city, within the Smithsonian, you have the statue of Washington as Zeus. As Zeus. And yeah. elsewhere, also a, a, atop a large pillar, you have Washington driving Helios's That's four right. horses. Right. In fact, one of the original one of the original plans for the uh, Washington Monument, the big obelisk, was going to have Apollo driving the horses, you know, out in front of mm. the the actual mm. Um, mm. male organ of Osiris. There, uh, you know. Anyway, <laughs> so but uh, but but another thing that uh, uh, most Americans don't know is that the ancient Egyptian um, practice, whenever a new pharaoh was going to become king. There was a festival called Opet, and they would put him on a little barge and take him up the Nile River. And as he's going up the Nile River, the laity are walking on both sides of the Nile River, and they're celebrating, but they're conducting a play Mm -hmm. based on Isis and Osiris, right? Because she finds his parts in the Mm -hmm. Nile River. So they're, they're going along, oh, I found another part. They're playing out this thing, right? But when he gets to uh, Karnak, the uh, temple of Amun-Ra, uh, he goes inside the domed belly of Isis. Mm-hmm. And as he's standing there looking at the obelisk on the outside uh, of Osiris, the uh, Egyptian magicians, and according to the book of Exodus, these guys had very strong supernatural power. Yeah. This is another thing we should maybe talk about on one of these webcasts is, mm-hmm. is this all just a bunch of hooey? Is it magic tricks <laughs> that they're playing? Or can people actually achieve a certain level of supernatural power and authority, Mm -hmm. which could include um, the ability to be able to move objects and that kind of thing? But is it a spirit that's actually moving it because they've put themselves into contact? Anyway, Mm -hmm. these Egyptian magicians conduct the raising of Osiris ceremony. uh, And the idea is that the spirit of Osiris, the seat of Osiris, is drawn up through the base of the obelisk. It magically emits into the belly of Isis. Mm -hmm. uh, And he is standing inside there. And then he's the one that's transmogrified. Mm -hmm. He becomes a living god. Something that that occurred to me while we were doing the um, panel discussion at the True Legends Conference. um, Let's go back to the, the, uh, the whole necromancy ritual at Ugarat to bless the new king, summoning the Rephaim and the Titans and all that. There's a ritual that is done or a ceremony that takes place during the inauguration of every American president right. by the Freemasons. So let's <laughs> kind of close out this, this broadcast with that because I think it, it's interesting that we're looking back, you know, 30, <coughs> uh, more than 3,000 years and seeing a, a parallel in what goes on in Washington, D.C. When, in, in when we bring a new president and welcome right. him to office. Well, that's exactly right. Exactly what the Egyptians did. <coughs> the Freemasons claim that they still possess the exact um, incantations that were conducted. There's been this idea for the longest time, how do the Raphaim come back? Mm -hmm. How do the giants come back? Right. And one of the theories, the Book of Jubilees, right? Noah's grandson, he finds the secrets of the watchers, which they wrote down, they carved them into a mountain before the flood. Yeah. Right, and after the waters go down, he finds it, and mm-hmm. uh, and he it says he transcribes it, he writes it all down, yep. and sin sins and, according and, to and, it. Yeah, yep. wouldn't let Noah know. Mm-hmm. But so there are those from the mystery schools and Rosicrucians and all that that say that that magic is still in possession today mm-hmm. by the modern Egyptian magicians, the Freemasons mm-hmm. and, and others. So what do they do at the inauguration of every American president? They repeat the same thing the Egyptians did as the U.S. president is standing in the dome mm-hmm. beneath the first Osiris, American mm-hmm. Osiris, Washington, mm-hmm. <clears throat> with the 72 pentagrams above his head, which bind the 72 cosmo craters, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. 
people need to get Derek Gilbert's book. The yeah. Great Inception, if they want to understand the significance of the number 72, and even what Jesus did to reverse that curse. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, well, it's, it's fascinating <laughs> that, uh, again, we, we think that we're so I- enlightened and scientific in, in our modern world that uh, reason has won out over superstition and the age of magic, when <laughs> in fact the ones who are pulling the levers of power behind the scenes are in fact... Trying to, trying to perform <coughs> these kinds of workings. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there are people who believe that that's the true power center yeah. in Washington, D.C. It's not the White House. Hmm. It's the headquarters of the Scottish Rite Freemasonry. Mm-hmm. And when you go inside, like I have, I've been in every part of it. I went up to the Hall of Charity and walked inside and seen where the Bush family has given literally millions and millions of dollars to propagate Scottish Rite Freemasonry. Hmm. You got to wonder if indeed they're not the ones that are pulling the levers. <laughs> but <Right>. anyway, <laughs> point is, during the inauguration of the president, standing in the belly of ISIS mm-hmm. with all that mysticism around him, facing the obelisk mm-hmm. in the Washington Mall across town, just a mm-hmm. couple of blocks from the White House, um, the modern Egyptian magicians, the Freemasons, are conducting the raising of Osiris mm-hmm. ceremony. Now they're they're doing that. You might call that like a parody or something, right? right? But they're doing it in anticipation of the day when that spirit really is going to rise up and Mm -hmm. take its place uh, in who we would call the Antichrist. Now, why Christians ought to pay attention to this is because in two places in the New Testament, in the book of Revelation, uh, and I mean in the book of Revelation and also in 2 Thessalonians, Paul says the Antichrist will be the son of perdition, the son of Apollia, Apollyon, Mm -hmm. Apollo. Mm -hmm. And then in Revelation 17, 8, the, the beast will rise up mm-hmm. out of the bottomless pit and go into Apollo, Apollyon. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so uh, they're trying to make that happen. That's mm-hmm. the scary mm-hmm. part about this is that behind these saboteurs, there are some deeply occultic and probably very influential members of the Washington elite mm-hmm. uh, that are looking forward to the dawn of a new golden pagan age. The, was next, there any, the uh, next installment we need to talk more about the Collins elite and the old bloodlines. Yes, that's a, that's a good point. I think we'll cut here because right. I think we've uh, uh, basically made mm-hmm. the point that there's more to the saboteurs than just uh, community organizing. <laughs> the book by Tom Horn, Saboteurs, and uh, we encourage you to keep watch on the, uh, the Skywatch TV web exclusive programs. You'll find those listed and linked at skywatchtv.com, but also on our uh, other delivery mechanisms, the Skywatch TV channels on Roku and Apple TV, and of course the Skywatch TV mobile app as well uh, throughout the month of October, along with the release of Saboteurs, The Deeper State, and uh, Gods and Thrones. We'll be uh, doing more programs like this, and we'll also talk more about uh, magic and how real it is uh, and what